data set that has got um, you know same in uh, measurements and we have got x variables and y variables so what is x variable it is the diameter of uh, uh, the p uh, in inches uh, of a parent plant so we have uh, the peanuts right so um, we have the diameter uh, of uh, these of a parent plant and the progeny uh, has also uh, seeds right so that diameter is taken as the uh, dependent variable so we're trying to find out how the progeny uh, diameter depends uh, on the uh, parent diameter right um, so we're trying to basically estimate y which is the diameter of the uh, the nut uh, or uh, yeah the seed from the progeny plant is uh, related to diameter of the uh, the uh, seed from the parent plant so this is y uh, the diameter for progeny and this is x the diameter for the parent seed and we have estimates alpha and beta so that's exactly what we are trying to do here now remember one thing here we have taken many seeds from you know uh, each individual parent so from each individual parent we have many progeny right so we have different diameters so when you have different diameter you can easily get the standard deviation or the variance of it right but that's not the luxury in in each scenario or in each example so in this example we have the standard deviation of the offsprings of the progeny um, you know uh, the seeds given to us so the estimation process will be slightly easier in this case okay so let's go ahead with the estimation the standard deviation reflects the information in the process y now we need to remember that y so we have y and x right so y and x here we have the diameter okay, let's say diameter is uh, 20 millimeter okay here it is let's say you know 19 millimeter okay now this 20 meter has been an average of many seats let's say 10 seats you know someone has 19 then 18 17.5 21 21.5 so you take the average of that because each parent has many uh, offspring, offsprings, right? So you take the average of that and that exactly represents the y value. Hence, given that we have several observations, we can always find the standard deviation of that observation or the variance of that observations. So that we can use that as the weight. So that we have the uh, standard deviation for or the offsprings, right? And we can use that as the weight. So what weight is nothing but the reciprocal of the variance, right? So we can easily find the weight, and then we can use that in the ordinary least square. We have the formula. We saw that three slides back. So we can use that formula, um, which is nothing but x transpose, you know, weighted uh, weight matrix multiplied to x, you know, whole inverse, and then you multiply it with another set of this expression and find out the beta values, and that's uh, all it's easy right but not always you will have this set of you know uh, observation given to you so experimentally this is possible but many times you want to you don't have that experimental data where you have several observations so that you can uh, go ahead with uh, calculating the uh, standard deviation and variance so the idea is to give uh, downweight the observation with large standard deviation so we have the standard deviation for each observation for y value and upweight the observation which has got small standard deviations, right? So, you know, logically that's what we need to do in uh, weight, uh, weight and least square. That's what we also learned in the previous slide that based on the standard deviation, our weight will differ. And that is, uh, you know, inversely proportional. That means the more variance you have, the less weight it gets in the uh, estimation process. So when you use Meditab and we have this uh, regression equation, you can use any software, R, SAS, SPSS. Uh, so he, this is uh, this is the OLS, this is the WLS uh, regression output, and this is the ordinary least square output. So we have used the same data and used different estimation process. So this is OLS and the, uh, the one above is uh, uh, the weighted least square. Uh, you can see that the difference in the estimates, right? Both in the intercept and slope coefficient. So there is a, uh, you know, significant difference in the uh, slope coefficient at least. So intercept is not very different, but the slope coefficient has a 
difference. Hence, when you explain the marginal effect, uh, that is that is uh, going to be some change, right? Some difference. So here, WLS is more appropriate because we have found out that variance uh, the of the error terms is not constant throughout. Hence, uh, ordinary square uh, has a, a, um, it's not appropriate because the uh, because of the violation of the uh, homoscedasticity assumption. When you do the plot by estimating, you find some difference. Okay, slight difference. You can see uh, the two lines here. They're more or less overlapping, but there is some difference. Most of the times, you will see that they will be very close. Okay, uh, there won't be much of a difference, but it does make a difference while you when you explain it. So if you are doing a forecasting of something, that won't make much of a difference. But if you are trying to explain the marginal effect, then it does have uh, a significant difference. So this example, the weights are known. As I have said, the weights are known. But this is this circumstance will not be there always. So how do you find, uh, you know, the weights when the weights are not given explicitly? When you have I observations, um, which is an, ab uh, an average of n observations so let, uh, sorry uh, the ith response of uh, a data set is an average of n uh, observations so variance will be uh, calculated very simply right variance will be nothing but variance divided by ni and the weight will be proportional to that so 1 by ni proportionate will be ni itself so that will be the weight if it is a total of ni observation if the ith response is a total it's just a sum of ni observations then its variance will be simply, uh, you know, the product of all the variances. Okay, here it was average, so we simply divided ni. Here it is the sum, uh, so we just do the product of uh, all the variances. You know, given the weight, I mean, product of uh, sorry, the product of the uh, observation, number of observations, the uh, the variance, and the weight it is exactly the reciprocal, which is one by ni. So this is what you need to, uh, you know. Um, remember while aggregating the observations, right? So these are additional information. You can always read more about it. How you aggregate observation based on, like in a, in our previous example, we saw it is an average of different observations. So the aggregation is average, but it will not be average all the time. It could be sum also. It could be um, you know some sort of different uh, uh, weighted average also. So how do you come up with weights when you have weighted average observations? Anyway, we are not going to deeper uh, aspect of it. We will keep it simple and go ahead. So now we have one example where you have the weights already given. We will go ahead with another example where weights are not explicitly uh, given to us. So when that is the case, we need to follow a few steps. Um, okay. Before that, a uh, few observations about uh, OLS. Sorry, WLS. The weighted least square estimates of the coefficient will usually be same as the ordinary least square. I have already said that OLS estimates will most likely be uh, same as uh, uh, WLS. Uh, so it doesn't help much in uh, changing the forecast, whereas it helps a lot uh, while explaining the marginal impact. In cases where there is a substantial difference in the OLS and WLS estimates, uh, you should uh, do a scrutiny or should do uh, a more investigation, thorough investigation of the estimation process. And you do it, you should do it uh, more uh, iteratively so that, you know, the estimation, uh, the coefficients will stabilize. And that's what we call as iteratively re, uh, re-weighted least square. So there's large difference that is a matter of worry because that should not be a large difference between these two kinds of estimates. So in that case, you should but iteratively, um, you know, um, uh, estimates uh, the WLS parameters and there will be a time when it will uh, stabilize very close to OLS. In some cases, the value of weights may be based on theory of prior research. And this is important. Many times you do research based on what has already been done in your given area. So someone might have taken weights for observations in your previous study. In that case, you can always go ahead with using uh, within the weights that the other researcher has used. But ensure that uh, it is theoretically sound and it has been uh, you know, peer reviewed and published so that you know you can uh, you can always consider the data uh, uh, to be reliable. In design of experiments, when you have 
you know, we're doing the experiments uh, um, through, through the proper uh, design and you know, design of experiments is, uh, is, 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 is a well-known phenomenon in uh, statistics. A large number of replicates weights can be estimated directly. So it, if in the scientific experiments, you can always uh, you know, do more experiments to get more observations. Uh, so if you are, you know, doing experiments in botany, chemistry, physics, uh, or engineering um, uh, sciences like civil engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, you can always uh, find multiple observations uh, for the same, um, uh, you know, same uh, observations, and then you can, uh, you know, aggregate it by average weight, right? That luxury you have when you are doing scientific experiments. So you can always find the you know standard deviation variance and then use that as the weight. Uh, okay, so it depends on the weight. Uh, so choosing the weights is the most trickiest things. And if you're not familiar with weight, it's always go, good to go ahead with the OLH instead of using the wrong weight. So you have to be very careful while using the weight. We'll take another example where weight is not explicitly mentioned. Okay, in that case, how do we use, uh, you know, uh, WLS, right? So here is an example of a house price. Uh, so Y, which is the target or dependent variable, which is the sale price of a home. And X1 and X2 are the independent variables, which is the square footage of home. Um, and then, you know, there is another variable X2, which is also some sort of uh, uh, know, feature of, of the, uh, you know, the house. Now, using X1 and X2, we need to uh, find out how they are related to the price of a uh, home. So, we use the ordinary least square and we found out the estimates. We have the coefficient, uh, standard deviation, T values, P values and so on. When you plot the residuals, we found that it's, it's not, uh, uh, firstly, it's not random. Secondly, the, the error variance is different. Here it is less, but here it is lot more, right? So clearly there is a difference in the error variance, right? It's more conical in state and, you know, it seems that OLS doesn't work because the error variance seems to be uh, non-constant. So how do we go ahead with estimating using OLS? There are five steps to be followed. So first, store the residuals and the fitted values from the ordinary least square. So start with OLS, you know, the way we have done previous slide. Start with OLS. Do the estimation using ordinary least square and store the residuals in some variable. Okay. Calculate the absolute values of the ordinary least square residuals. Right. You can always calculate the absolute value. How do you do that? Just take the modulus, right? You can always find the absolute value. It may not be the negative values all the times, right? Because negative value doesn't mean anything, it's just the difference, right? So it has to be always a positive one. So take the modulus of all the residuals. Regress the absolute values of the OLS residuals versus the OLS fitted values. So what is fitted value? Your Y hat is the fitted value from OLS. And your you know, error terms are the, um, the absolute value of error term, by the way. Do not have to be negative, right? Now you have error terms and you have fitted values of your, your dependent variable. In the third step, what do you do? You regress the absolute values of ordinary least square versus the OLS fitted values. So OLS fitted values is Y hat and this is your um, error terms. So you regress this as a dependent variable and this as independent variable. Okay. You do the regression. Okay. This with this. Okay. The error terms, absolute value of the error terms with the fitted value from the ordinary least square. Uh, you might wonder why are we doing this? Well, we are doing this because we want, to, we want to get a more smoother values of uh, the error terms. Okay, that's the idea. Other than that, you know, there is no reason why we do it. It's to get to get a smoother value, and this is what done in many other statistical techniques. So, uh, if, you're from, if you can always ask your statistics teacher why we regress uh, the fitted values many times. It is, you know, more or less to get a, few, a smoother uh, uh, values. Okay, um, so this is more like an interpolation uh, or extrapolation uh, type. If you're familiar with these concepts, you, you would uh, understand it very well. Okay, calculate weights equal to one by fit square. So whatever the fitted values are estimates of the errors. Um, now what you do is that um, once you regress, you store the fitted values from this regression. 
Now, fitted values of regression will be again some sort of okay. Let's call that um, e dash. Okay, and this is again estimate. So we'll use hat. So from this regression, we'll get this error terms. This will be more smoother compared to what we have used here. Calculate the weights equal to one by fit. So this we considered as the standard deviation for each observation. So we didn't have standard deviation uh, in the initial data. So using this three step, we calculate the standard deviation, and then we use that standard deviation to calculate the weight. And weight is nothing but one by um, you know the e hat dash square. Okay. So this is the weight. And this weight will be used for each observation. And once we have the weight, then it is very simple, right? We already know the formula in this in in, in the slides earlier to this. We have written the formula. Use that uh, WLS formula and and find it out. You can always do the estimation through software. You do not have to do all these steps by, on your own, except the fact the first three steps are important. You have to do these first three steps on your own, and then uh, the software itself will do it. And nowadays it's all automated. Now you don't have to do what on your own. You can use a WLS, uh, you know, a, a procedure or function uh, in R or SPSS, and that will do the, all the steps. So the reason I explain all five steps is for your understanding of theory, so that you can always explain how well WLS is different from the uh, ordinary least square. Now we have followed uh, the same steps that we uh, explained in the previous slide and we have a different set of uh, estimates this time from WLS. Okay, so this is different. You can compare it with the ordinary least square estimate. When you plot it, you can see the uh, values are a lot different. Now you have more or less constant uh, variance. There is some sort of non-constant at the end, but then you know you can always try it out different weights to avoid that. But most part, it is a constant variance, right? You can see it uh, yourself, and you can compare this graph with your previous OLS graph, where you know the variance was non-constant in nature. Okay, so this is how you um, estimate, uh, find out, or estimate the OLS, uh, sorry, the WS uh, regression uh, problem. Um, so there are certain points to remember while using uh, WLS. The weighted regression is, is not an appropriate solution if the heteroscedasticity is caused by omitted variables. Many times, heteroscedasticity problem is um, there in your, in your data because of omitted variable. That means you have missed out on an important variable. In that case, weighted least square is not a very suitable uh, uh, you know, way of um, handling heteroscedasticity. There are other ways to handle it. Uh, maybe you should go ahead and use the omitted variable, right? That's the best way. Um, if that's not the case, then WLS is, uh, is a good uh, way of handling heteroscedasticity. Determining correct weight is a big challenge. Okay, If it is already given from an experiment, that's good. Otherwise, you have to follow the three steps I explained in the previous slides. The value uh, based theory, I mean, I mean when you are uh, using um, um, your literature, you are referring to some literature in your area of research, you can always take um, you know good weights already used by uh, your uh, previous researchers, and if it is a published work, it is always reliable to use the weight. So give some importance to in the literature in your um, in your uh, area of research. Thank you so much, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe. Thank you.